So Betty, I've had a vulva epiphany. Ah, oh, do tell. And it was actually kind of exciting. You know when you're kind of like a, you know, a battle horse, vulva expert, feminist, <laughs> body sex aficionado. It's like there's nothing left. <laughs> then when you find something new about your sexuality, your body, it's like, <gasps> Very exciting. It was. So since I stopped nursing Grayson, I noticed I have this little extra little flap of skin. We've seen them in the workshops during general show and tell between my perineum and, the, and my asshole. It's actually probably a little piece of my asshole that's kind of came out a little. And not that my asshole is open, it's just this extra little sweet piece of skin. Sweet because it feels good. It feels incredible. Ah. Oh. It's very sensitive and it's kind of erogenized, is that a word? <laughs> Eroticized my whole genital region. Mm. Now I talked about that with a woman at a retreat and she had a similar experience after having a baby. And they always make it seem like your body falls apart and like, you know, sex isn't the same, but sometimes it can be better. No one talks about better. Never, when it comes to women and our bodies and aging. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Or having babies. How about better? What, what's better? So what's better is, and then I'm like, maybe it's because I have a, a fat ass I have this little piece of skin and my ass cheeks are like rubbing around like when I'm doing yoga and rubbing. And so I started squatting every morning in my shower because of course I'm worried in the beginning that it's a hemorrhoid. But I'm like, hemorrhoids don't feel good. So I kept on touching it. So I would lather up with soap and this is what I do every day now. I squat, I go over my labia, I start with my vulva because I don't want to neglect her. I feel like that's healthy. Don't you think? <laughs> Start there. I do the little wishbone around my inner labia and then I go to my perineum and I just do a gentle circle with my full hand and then I feel that little flap of skin and then I just press in a little, press up. It feels so good. Oh my God. It's like another clitoris. Yeah, it's like at the beginning and the end, at the top and the bottom I have two. <laughs> so, it felt so good I knew it wasn't a hemorrhoid. And then we were going to Netflix and we were flying out and we were gonna do general show and tell and I'm like, oh no, I hope I don't have this extra because it feels so big, but it really isn't. Like I looked at it in a mirror, it's this little tiny, but I thought of all times, like, you know, Roxy's gonna come out <laughs> on stage and they're gonna see this little flap of skin. Roxy never lets us down. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about how you know, I do vulva massage before I masturbate. It's always in a sexual context. It's always where orgasm is the goal. I'm not really enjoying the good feelings, like you say. You always say, just enjoy the good feelings. And I've said that a million times. Just enjoy the feelings. But that's what I do now every day in the shower. It's become this new ritual outside of my masturbation practice. And I was like, you know, how many women really... And then I put my thumb in my vagina, penetrated myself, and I put my middle finger in my anus, and then I felt how close it was. And I'm like, wow, you know, we don't do that. Like, I should know my body better than anyone else. I've done that. See? The master has done that. <laughs> <laughs> I think any woman that's got her hand down there between her legs will eventually do that. It's a self-discovery yeah it's like sticking your finger up your nose. and maybe I did it when I was a little girl but now it's a whole different eroticized situation and then of course I had to get some anal toys so I got a small butt plug and you know the ends of it were a little like it was silicone were a little long for my perineum and it was kind of pushing into my vagina I didn't like that so I just took my scissor out and I customized it good and it felt good valuing that part of my body absolutely that I got accoutrement and I customized it and now I just look forward to like I need to be penetrated anally well and it's just so exciting have you tried it with your partner 
Yes. And so it's like this whole added thing. And I, I think you always say that about your sexuality. It's always changing. It's never the same. It's always, yeah. I mean, there's the sameness, but it's always got a little variation. So is it healthy, Dr. Dotson, for us to touch our perineums and our vaginas and our clitorises and our anuses? It is very much so. Why? It's part of your body and you own it. You either touch your nose, stick your finger up your nose hole on, so, mm, and see if it tastes like. We touch, I put lotion head get to toe. Get your finger in your ear and get little wax out. That doesn't taste good. <laughs> no, no. no, it's bitter. <laughs> this is just all part of having a body. Yeah, that's how I felt, embracing myself. It's like liberating. Yeah. It's self-knowledge. I just feel so much kind of more grounded. Yeah. And it's touch, our touch. I think we're, always, we're conditioned to look for third party touch. Someone has to want me and touch me, and then I have value. Yes. Instead of I touch myself and I have value. Well, touching yourself is the uh, foundation for all touch. And when, you, when I think about all the women that don't touch themselves, I just, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking as I was squatting in the shower. I just thought, God, I should have done this when I was 16, 15. All along. Yeah. All along. I think I did more touching when I was younger. Yeah. Just, just curiosity. And getting out the mirror and looking. Because I've looked. Because, you know, when I first had this little flap of skin, I looked at all the old general show and tell photos of myself, and I had a little, a little crease in my anus that you could see a little bit. Not like a, a tag or a piece of skin, but, and that's the one that came out. I think it's hormonal. Most likely. But I was happy to have those images that I could <laughs> look <Wow>. at. <laughs> Documenting your pussy throughout the years. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. It changes. It does. Your body changes, and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, a, a wonderful process. Change is a, a, uh, should be welcomed by all of us. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't like the change when you see it. Like, I mean, I've got these brown spots on my face. I don't. But you have the wisdom. That's no. true. <laughs> I, that, uh, <laughs> I'm so much smarter. <laughs> and happier. Basically, yes. When I call you, you always say, I'm, I'm just so happy with my life. And you don't hear older people say that. I'm, you know, I go, I say the word gratitude all day long. I say it out loud. I say, gratitude, because I'm living such a wonderful, in this beautiful life. two rooms. It serves me. Beautifully. I mean, I have my little sitting area and I have my back room where I'm at the drawing board. You have <sighs> what you need and you have what you want. Yes. And so, yes, I have my first pair of reading glasses and an extra little piece of skin <laughs> that feels really good to touch. <laughs> 46 is looking up. <laughs> 86, and it looks like it's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you're 90. <laughs> Look at oh, no. She still can't accept that you're 90. I am? Yes. She's 90, right? We had a big party. My last birthday turned me 90. Yes. Really? So I'm not an octogenarian. I am. They don't even have No, because most people don't make it. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> we feel great, and we want you to feel great. Touch your whole genital region with love. An oil or some really nice peppermint soap I've been using <laughs> for a little oh, bit no. of zing. That'd oh, work. no, I love it. <laughs> oh, really? It's a little kinky. I like it. <laughs> oh, darling. You're entitled. See you next time.